this was an opportunity to uh, test whether the model or as proposed by government was going to work. Is it possible to keep children in families regardless of what families are going through? Is it possible to in reintegrate children back into families? So we were demonstrating that it's actually possible despite the circumstances that the families are going through, that uh, circumstances that are there in the, po in the community. We also did um, a situation analysis to help us get to know the situation that we are going into. It is key that before you move into a house, you know what is in that house. So we did what we call Satan to give us an insight on where you are going. I wanted to say that uh, care reform uh, needs uh continuous monitoring, the implementation itself needs uh, continuous monitoring to ensure that things are right. We also conducted a disability assessment among households to really understand what issues were affecting them and their children. And we, based on the assessment, we were able to understand that there was need to support the families to really gain the knowledge on how to support their children find value in, in loving their children and regarding them as, as any other child and really accord them the support that uplifts their dignity. From the pilot pro, pro, uh, county, the evidence that we got there is what we are using now to do the scale up for these other demonstration counties. When we started the program, one key thing that we noticed was the misinformation that was on the ground in relation to having children in, in, in the institutions. So the first thing that we needed or we did was to sensitize various players in child protection working on the attitude uh, and practices among the families is also very key because with all these interventions if the attitude of the family and the child is not supported and even the community that is receiving the child then uh, their efforts to promote family and community based care might might be in futility institution seems to be the best quick option but they didn't quite understand the, the damaging effects of institutionalizing children. So with that awakening, with that consciousness, you're beginning to see community leaders, community members, surviving relatives, being able to say, okay, fine, I can take care of this child. With the continued trainings, we came to internalize and get the actual concept of care reform. And we also came to know and to realize that there were advantages in supporting children while at home than supporting them while they were staying within the institution. After sensitizing uh, the number of uh, uh, players, we realized that uh, we did not have documents. We did not have documents to use, documents that would help us we do not have um, structures. We do not have a standard operating procedure that would help us move in a more structured way that can be replicated in other counties when the time comes. We have the guidelines for case management for reintegration. But then standard operating procedures were developed for all the options. So the option on kinship care, the option on foster care, the option on adoption, guardianship, kafala, and supported independent living. And all along 
the officers in Kisumu, in Nyamira, in Kilifi were engaged to see whether it was working. Yeah, the integration process, the lessons I've learned is also that uh, it is not as complex as one might think it is. As long as you are, you lay your, your, your foundation well, as long as you do your case management well, then you are bound to succeed. Cases of relapse won't be there. The other lesson that we are learning is that it's possible for government to implement care reform work, but there is need for a well-capacitated workforce and adequate workforce. So in terms of capacity, a lot has been done to build their capacity on family strengthening initiative, case management uh, processes, uh, reintegration processes and how to work with communities to ensure that children remain in families. So in Kisumu and Yamira counties, the, the, the cadre of frontline workers with whom we work with are now well trained and empowered to do this work. Continuously, uh, we were trained on how to do the assessment. Which cases do we begin with first? How do we prepare the child? How do we prepare the family? And at what stage? Do you say that a child now qualifies to be reintegrated back home? And then after reintegrating, do we just leave a child at that point? Or do we continue doing our, our, our monitoring? So the trainings actually equip not just a few of us, but nearly all of our staff on how to go about the reintegration process. We used the structures that are there. There is a a community structure in Kenya known as Child Protection Volunteers. Uh, it is a structure under Department of Children's Services. So we mobilized that community structure to help in the tracing uh, of families and working together with the social workers in the institutions and also with the children officers. The CPVs are very critical. Critical because the department is thin on the ground and CPVs work even up to the villages. When children are integrated back to, into the community or into the households, it's the CPVs and social workers that move around within these uh, locals to ensure that these children are safe where they are. In this program, we work with three categories of people. One is families at risk of separation. In those families, there could be circumstances, be it poverty, be it family dysfunction, be it other aspects that could lead to family breakdown that could deny children to thrive in those family environments. So we work with them to ensure that the family is stable enough. The second category that uh, we work with are uh, children who are now being reintegrated back. The family, they had already separated from their families. Now they're being reintegrated back or reunified with their biological families or other alternative forms of family-based care. Reintegration is a process. We start by family preparation. We prepare the families and inform them the importance of the children being within the family and the benefits of them as a family having their children raised within, within them. Then after that, after preparing the family is when we go to the next step, which is placing the children with the families. After placing the children with the families, we don't leave the children with them at that level. We do family monitoring. We monitor the children at the family levels. We also monitor them while they're in schools. The third category that we work with are care leavers. Children, young people who have been in care, and now they are graduating from care, and now they are supported to live independently within the community. We are trying to expand uh, the program in a way that it is responsive to the needs of the children with disability and their families. 
And uh, what happened, again, together with changing the way we care, we supported um, uh, pieces of work on disability, one of them looking at the assessment and the needs, which has led to development of um, guidelines to, not guidelines, support package for families with children with disability, plus tec technical guidance on children with disabilities. We wanted a buy-in. We wanted a buy-in from all the players because we realized that uh, care reform cannot be driven by only a single agency, Director of, of Children's Services. We had to bring everybody else in the program to do their bit, to do their, their role as prescribed for them. Most of the time we are in technical working groups with the care reform partners, that is SOS and UNICEF. And the other times we are planning jointly on activities that need to be implemented. And we have really been working in a, in a very good way that we have not duplicated our support to the children and the families. And we are able to all rally on the efforts of the Department of Children's Services. During our venture into supporting disability inclusion activities, we have worked with, uh, we, we, we were able to mobilize the disability inclusion stakeholders and support them to establish networks. The work with the traditional leaders, religious leaders, community leaders is very important because uh, they, when inspired, they pioneer change within their communities. They take lead and take action towards ensuring that families are adequately supported and that the children who are at risk of separation then are able to get the support they need so that they can stay. There is a need to have a buy-in from government. If uh, you don't have a buy-in, uh, implementation can be very difficult, especially on the areas of resource uh, mobile allocation, uh, because with care reform, you need to have resources ready for implementation, otherwise you stop on the way and you are stuck. The bigger lesson also is uh, working with donors or financial supporters of CCIs because they channel funding to CCIs to support center-based uh, initiatives. Um, so it is quite critical to do advocacy at global, at regional level with the donors who support CCI so that they can transform their support towards family-based care. The most important thing is to convince the donor. It is we to make them know the benefits of supporting a child while staying within a household so that they also buy in the idea that we have because unless they accept it, then as an organization you cannot go in.